All right, here on CBS Sports HQ, it is time for Pete Prisco's Power Rankings, presented by FanDuel. Um, every week, you know, we get to we get to critique, we get to discuss Pete's Power Rankings, and we have the Chiefs. They are still in that top spot, the only undefeated team in the NFL. Um, as we were heading into Week Nine, we had the Lions, the Bills, the Packers, and the Texans rounding out the top five. All right, so Pete, you were telling people stop doubting the number one Chiefs. So let me ask you this, where are people coming at the Chiefs and how are you gonna squash that? Well, every week it's somebody else. Last week, Ravens should be number one. Eh, not so fast. Look what happened at Cleveland. The Lions should be number one. Do they rush the passer at all? No, not so fast. So the Chiefs have earned the right to be in the top spot. You are what your record says you are and they're <laughs> undefeated. And to just sit here and everybody, in the, all you ever hear around the league is, oh, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be undefeated. They're close to losing games. It doesn't matter. They're undefeated. And oh, by the way, they have Patrick Mahomes. They have Andy Reid. They went out and added a pass rusher. And Josh Travis Kelsey's Jay. still alive. Travis Kelsey can still catch passes when he's not going to concerts. <laughs> oh. And believe me. Oh, why did you have to throw that at <laughs> Come on. Come on. They um, win when Taylor Swift is there. And you know it. You know okay. it, Pete. Okay? And believe me, this team Bill is Bell still the team Bill went to one of her concerts, although he is not coaching anymore. So. I mean, he went to one. Yeah, I mean, the, the Chiefs, I think it's... <laughs> Is it 14 no. games now in a row for the Kansas City Chiefs? And not only are they undefeated this year, you look at the way they finished the last two years. Super Bowl champs back-to-back. -back. Got to put some respect on the Chiefs. Now. Do they have worries? Of course they have worries. Every team in the league has worries. But there's, at least in my mind, they're the least of my worries. But you don't care that Patrick Mahomes isn't having, you know, career best numbers. As long as they're winning and undefeated, they're going to be in that top spot for you, Pete. Yes. Okay. And, and you know what? You look at their schedule, the only one that I see on that schedule that's a real possibility to be a loss is at Buffalo. It's the only one. Okay. Gonna, if they win that game, they're going undefeated. Other people have other feelings. Um, about, they're entitled to about their about wrong the opinion, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and we're going to... Right. Right. You've had some wrong opinions uh, in these and power rankings. That. We're going to get to them that. here in a second. Yeah, but let's talk about the commanders because they are a riser, rising wrong three opinion. spots. Yep, to, to, oh, I feel like you were right about the commanders. I was right about the commanders. Oh, who did you have winning the NFC? That is true. The Cowboys. Yes. Wrong. That was <laughs> wrong. Um, so, to your point, Amanda, um, you guys both had, had the Cowboys winning two weeks ago. Um, Pete, you're admitting you were wrong. Are you, are you all in on the commanders in the NFC East and the NFC and so forth? Well, I'm all in on them possibly winning the East because I think the Eagles are going to challenge them there. The Cowboys are not. The Cowboys, you know, might as well just dig a hole, throw them in, put, start putting, putting this dirt on them. They're done. The Cowboys are finished. Washington is getting better on defense. That's the one thing we didn't know about them after about three or four weeks is that can they improve on defense? And they've made massive improvement on defense. They're going to score on offense. We saw that. That game the other day, it's going to be talked about the Hail Mary. Shouldn't have been that close. They dominated the game, kept them in it. And when you keep a team in it, eventually they're going to come back. They ended up winning on a Hail Mary. They're the team. They're probably the team to beat in the division. Yeah, the great teams, they find a way to get things done. And Jaden Daniels is obviously a great quarterback, but it's this football team that we're talking about, the commanders. Dan Quinn's got this group playing really well defensively. They got after Caleb Williams the other night. I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. To your point, that defense, early on in the season, we said, man, they're playing really well for a bad defense. Now they're just kind of playing well in Washington. And by the way, if you play Matt Eberflus every week, you're going to have a good chance to win because he mm. botches the end of the game. So that's a, <laughs> that's a, a you terrible. Know that was coming. That's bullying right okay. there. That's, that's piling on. He's, he's had a hard weekend, man. No, I know. Like, look at this. What is that? Like a what do you call that shirt you have? In this is this is my change-up. This is my. This yeah, is actually, that's what is it? Like this long This is actually underwear. a Travis Matthew Cloud shirt, and they're going to be helping us out of pushing the pile. So I'm doing a little. I feel guilty because I gave you the go-ahead on the shirt. Yeah. And a, I asked. I asked Jacqueline. I was like, "Can I wear this?" She she gives me a thumbs up, I sprinted to the well, desk. Because you'll be wearing it, it's your pajamas. I, think, I, I, I feel like Kyle was just crying and woke up, put it on, was like, I'm right, just wearing like it pajamas. to work and putting a blazer. Like, I think it looks he good, put, Kyle. He put the baby like over it. here and he's wearing yeah. the pajamas. The babies, yeah. yeah you got two babies. babies. Uh, let's talk about the Vikings here. It seems like a long time ago. We were talking about that 5-0 and start. Pete, you have them dropping down to number nine, I believe. Look, 
the bad thing, they're in a really tough division. And so are we looking at a team that was potentially Super Bowl contender? Oh, my God, look at the Vikings. Are they even going to make the postseason? Maybe it's not. It's in their hands. Maybe not. And, and there's a couple reasons why. They're not a big football team. They get pushed around, and that's a problem. Brian Flores could cover up a lot of that stuff with his ability to show different looks and pressures, and he can get around it. But eventually, you have to be able to stop somebody when they're leaning on you and pushing on you. I'm not sure they can. The other thing is, in one of the dumbest decisions that I've seen this entire year, and you guys know how I hate stupid decisions by coaches, <laughs> at the end of the half of the last game, the Rams had one timeout left, and there were 35 seconds or so left in the half, and they decided to run a play. And what happened on that play? They lost their all-pro left tackle. Christian Darisol was having such a good year. The only thing that can happen in that situation, there's two things that can happen. One, you turn the ball over and give them point-blank points. Two, you get a player injured. They lost their left tackle. Vikings in big trouble. Yeah, it was no good for the Vikings, and unfortunately, I don't think it gets much better for them. We saw the way that they started. I think it was 2016, or it was a 2016. The Vikings started so hot, they missed the playoffs. I could see that happening to this team. They had two really good offensive tackles in O'Neal and Darisaw. I covered up a lot of the issues that were existing on the interior part of the offensive line. Now you get Darisaw down. You're looking at rush groups being able to win at, at any of these spots now, except for the right tackle spot I think it spells disaster for the Minnesota Vikings moving forward to your point about the defense not big enough they were confusing people at the line of scrimmage now they're kind of get bullied at the line of scrimmage and they get bullied on the offensive line in the middle of that offensive line because yep. they're not big because Rick Spielman drafted them all what's the percentage <laughs> you would give them Kyle to make the postseason I don't know I'm not a big percentages guy but I would say it yeah. would be 50 percent right now okay. well, earlier today on the podcast he guaranteed the Lions were going to win the Super Bowl I said I guarantee that the Lions <laughs> will be in the Super Bowl <laughs> Win it. I walked it back. Bengals, okay. one or two and ten. Well, it's still got time. <laughs> um, Pete, you somehow managed to already uh, give Kyle some some grief about the uh, Bears. We got a Rick Spielman jab in there, but we're we're actually gonna, I, uh, you know, unfortunately transition back to the middle of the pack here, 11 through 19 in your power rankings. And the Bears did drop, Pete. They dropped six spots. Um, Kyle, is that too much that they're falling six spots after this this uh, tough matchup here with the Commanders? I think there's there's two conversations you have to have. It's about the football team, and I think the football team has played well enough to be higher in the rankings. We've talked about this week in, week out, but it's the coaching staff stuff that really concerns me. That's why they're falling down the rankings. That's why they lost on a Hail Mary in a game that, honestly, they should have won. You said they had no business winning. They should have won the game. It was because of the coaching. All right, and also we have the Cowboys who have fallen to Ooh, uh, right, number 20. Cowboys. Number yeah. 20 on the list. Um, and Pete, you've had a lot of a lot of words for the Cowboys. You said this team is a mess. Pete also said yesterday that they're going to be more cooked by the time Thanksgiving comes around than the turkey that's going to be on the your team. I was going to say yes. more than the turkey. Yeah, and believe me, there's a lot of people that burn their turkeys. You ever go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving? <laughs> it's kind of crappy. Uh, <laughs> no. Sounds like you have. <laughs> uh, do you even cook? Like, do you guys? I no. wouldn't even think you cook on Thanksgiving. No. You probably no. go out. It's, like the over, it's overrated. The whole thing. You work 18 hours to make a meal and you eat it in two seconds and go watch football. <laughs> the most overrated thing going. Right? You agree? I think... Uh, I love things. I think I disagree with you. Okay. Everyone love disagrees with okay. you. But back to the issue at hand. The Cowboys will be cooked by Thanksgiving. Agreed. You look at their schedule. <laughs> it is brutal. It is brutal. And what do the Cowboys do well? They don't run the ball. CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott can throw it around. That's it. They don't stop the run. They don't do... They don't have a second weapon. They don't do much of anything well. And you look at it on paper and you say they have major issues. If Parsons is in there, they rush the passer well. He's not even in there. So major concerns about the Cowboys. They're done. You don't have to... You don't, you don't get the opportunity or the luxury to rush the passer when you can't stop the run. You True. add to the fact that you can't run on the offensive side of the ball. Now you're asking Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb to do the whole show. It never ends up well. They haven't even been incredibly good this season relative to the, the years they've had in years past. So I'm concerned about the Cowboys. I think they're going to be turducken by Thanksgiving. Turducken? You yeah. went old old school on the turducken. Yeah, man. You take the turkey, you take the duck, you put, put it in it there, together. you put the chicken boom, in the Boom, turkey, boom, boom, the boom, and eat it. Boom. It's all John turducken. Madden. I got it. Yeah, that Thanks. was right. <laughs> I thought you like you were going for a Christmas story there for half a second, oh, no, but we're going John, John Madden. Madden. I appreciate it. The um, yes, the goat. Also the goat of our hearts. We're going to find out about football would be Jameis Winston, the preacher, the rapper. He takes the Browns to this miraculous win. <laughs> the goat of our hearts. He's the goat of our hearts. Oh, because here's my question. And I love Jameis more than anyone. And yes, he is playing better than Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson should not have been in there anymore. Is this a flash in the pan, though, Pete, for the Browns? 
I don't. Do think they so. find a long-term answer at some point too? Yeah, he, he's not the long-term answer. They yeah. got to get. They got to find the quarterback. The problem is there. You got so much money invested in the other guy. I don't know how you do find a long-term answer. So it, it's an issue, but it's a great story to see Jameis back in there. And he look, he did some really good things. But let's not forget the play before he threw the game-winning touchdown pass. Kyle Hamilton had an interception in his hands and dropped it. That's what you get with Jameis. You're going to get the good. You're going to get the bad. But it's going to be a fun ride. It's <laughs> as as coaches over the years have told me who have coached him. They they say, look, he doesn't know what it's like to check it down. He goes for it all the time, and that's part of the problem and the charm of Jameis Winston. It's fun to watch. We love watching it. He's a great kid to, to, when he talks about it, but there's going to be mistakes. He's going to make mistakes. Eventually, it'll catch up to him. He'll make mistakes, but I love the story. It's great to see it happen. I'm going to be tuning into the Browns every week. Yeah. You can't miss this guy going out and playing. For the Jameis game or Winston. just for his interviews? Dude, for Jam Both, the Jameis Winston effect. Because I think about that locker room and all the stuff they went through early on in the season it's hard to show up and be motivated to play when you know that you have zero chance to win and with Deshaun Watson they had no chance to win now they got their quarterback it's gonna be interesting to see how this you know that should out. be on a wall in some team's facility by the way if I don't say so much uh, I'm just gonna tell you I don't know if that's on air right now yeah. because yeah. we're having some monitor issues so we will see this graphic here in a minute when it comes up, that is a handsome uh, but I don't it it, it'll be a tease. surprise that's yeah. our tease for the tease here <laughs> by the way the Browns are playing the Chargers coming up on CBS this weekend uh, you guys were on a podcast today. How yeah, was it? Was it was fun. We designed our uh, prototypical running back using yeah, guys a, from today. Then which we, is a bad, it was a bad experience because you know me, I don't like Yeah, running you backs. creating a running back? Yeah. We oh had some delay. I created, I created Fred Taylor. That's who the running back should be. Okay. <laughs> Coming that's, up. That's a fair uh, point. It's fair. Exactly one week from today, the NFL trade deadline. Pete Prisco will play general manager.